Uh, resume the meeting. Uh, number five, monthly financial report. Uh, Dr. Will Banks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Trustees, you have the report before you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Just a quick one to follow up on Ted's question uh, on the uh, investment report. <coughs> this is April 30th. I thought when we hired the custodial bank, we were going to start getting like the pre just previous month instead of two months previous. We're still transitioning to that. We're still working through uh, issues with the custodian, getting the reporting correct, and then eventually, once we have all that ironed out, the data feed to Callan will be some relatively automatic, and then they will give us a, a, a month end report from the immediately preceding month. So. Just the one page you like to get now? Something like that, yes. It, it'll be different. It'll have more performance numbers rather than just valuation data. But it's we're still working towards getting there in the midst of everything else we have going on. Any other questions? Okay, item number six, uh, discussion, possible action regarding agreement with Hanson Bridget. So my question is, we had um, voluntary correction um, program last year, which we budgeted pretty high. Do we need to have this much money for in a contract for this coming year? What did we um, What did we pay them last year? Even with VCP, it was correction. We did not have a VCP last year. Uh, we had a VCP letter. Right. No. We, we budgeted for them to do a determined updated determination letter. That's correct. Something. That's correct. In which was because of the VCP. No. There was a requirement, I thought. The of. determination letter is separate from the VCP. But the, the determination letter filing uh, was a prudent uh, action for us to do. Uh, and we did do that. We budgeted 30000 last year for Hanson Bridget, including the determination letter. This year, we've dropped back down to the $15,000 budget amount um, because we don't have the determination letter filing, the bulk of the determination letter filing. Did so. we spend the whole 30000 last no, year? No, we did not. Fourteen. So we spent 14000 last year with the determination letter. Why do I want to approve a contract for fifteen? This is a contract for their services at their uh, the, the contract hourly rate. It has a cap of $15,000. Um, Going over that would require coming back to the board, and this is in line with the budget that was uh, has been forwarded uh, by the Audit and Budget Committee uh, recommended for approval. I'd make a recommendation we cut it down. Do you know what our expense was minus the VCP the prior year? I do not have those details in front of me. Do you know how much the termination letter was last year? I do not have that information. I, I just, if we only spent 14000 with this extra stuff this year, I just don't see why we budget for fifteen. Why would we budget for ten? I think we're still probably way over funded at ten. My recommendation is that the board approve this contract as, as presented because we are, if something comes up, we need to have the ability to uh, call on our tax council services as needed. Um, if we don't need services, we're not going to pay for them. That $15,000 is merely a cap uh, before we have to come back to the board. So I would recommend that we uh, approve this as presented. So moved. Uh, I need to make a motion. Oh. So moved is motion. <laughs> I move that we uh, adopt this agreement as presented. I second. All right. Discussion? Discussion? Yeah, I, so if we're, I don't think we're going to ever spend 15000 in one shot. If we do have something come up where we need it, this is just our tax council. If we did have something come up for a project that was so out of the ordinary that we needed to um, have more than $10,000 spent on it, I think we would be discussing it. It would be a normal procedure for any other board I'm on to approve it for that. Um, you know, uh, for that extra work because of something that came up. But I just don't see how going into the year, how if we spent 14000 last year with a major issue, the um, determination letter, 
I just I don't feel comfortable just expanding it off that this year. Um, I would have it be a reasonable amount, and I think you took the determination letter. I don't think you'd spend five thousand, and this would be doubling what we'd normally expect. That we don't have anything on the calendar for tax stuff, and I think a reasonable approach would give you enough money to have it be ten thousand. Dr. Wilbanks, this is uh, John Sackwood. Uh, this uh, item came through the Budget Committee, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, this is the uh, budget, I uh, budget item as recommended by staff? Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Judy, roll call. Well, uh, can you read the um, uh, motion again? Uh, the, uh, motion again? The motion is to adopt the agreement as presented. Thank you. Can you roll call? Ms. Kavanis? Yes. Mr. Sakowitz? Yes. Supervisor Jordy? Yes. Mr. Stevens? No. Mr. Knudsen? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Approved. That's approved. Okay, the Contract with Hanson and Bridget has been approved for fifteen thousand dollars. <coughs> up to, or up to, up to, up to, up to okay. excuse me, up to. Thank you. Okay, number seven. Discussion of possible action regarding audit and budget budget committee report. Um, Mr. Stevens has resigned as chair, so um, Mr. Knutson is the new chair of the uh, audit and budget committee. Your report, please. Uh, we met. June 8th, was it? Yes, sir. Um, here, we discussed the budget. We did agree to a reduction in the amount budgeted for um, the attorneys. Um, Nossaman, it's our uh, fiduciary yeah. council. Nossaman, from, I think it was from $15,000 to $7,500. That's that correct. We to, and, and, uh, other than that, there was no uh, changes, um, and the committee voted to uh, present the budget with that minor change. And and if I may add, uh, uh, Trustee Knudsen, uh, the committee met um, uh, for some length, so it, it, uh, even though we we're accepting the budget as recommended by staff, uh, we reviewed each uh, line item, uh, we, we discussed each line item, mm -hmm. there was a significant debate, on several of the line items. So to say to the entire board now that we're simply passing along to the board is not to say that this committee did not do uh, some a very exhaustive um, analysis of the budget. We did. Yes. Mr. Knudsen, you're recommending approval of the, of yes. the budget? Okay. I'll so that, it. no, you don't need a second. I'll, it's coming from I'll committee. Second. I'll there's, second that motion. There's no second required. Okay. It's uh, coming from a committee. Um, Open for discussion. Open for discussion. So public, you want to let public speak now? Or? Uh, sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, in looking over the, uh, the budget, I was really impressed. I have to say thanks. I think the staff did a great job this past year on page 9 where it shows that they, in fact, came, on, came in $478,000, basically $478,500 under your, your, your budget for last year or this year, and I think that's really great. Uh, in fact, you should be blowing horns and, and going to the members and saying, hey, see what we did, it really came in great. But then I look and compare that to what you're proposing, and you're proposing an increase for the total budget of $611,000. That's more than double what you've saved. And I don't understand how you can possibly justify that Oh, I see individual line items. Uh, for example, the, uh, the new manager line item went uh, from 11000 to 295000 an increase of $283,000. Uh, it seems a little bit excessive. Uh, keep in mind, you have a fiduciary responsibility to ensure to your members that you're maximizing your efficiency. This, isn't, this doesn't look like efficiency. I mean, for instance, uh, there's a, a line item here for an increase in your uh, uh, training budget that's gone up and you're proposing $5,000. Where are you guys going to go? Heck, if you want to get out of the heat of the valley, come over to the coast. We've got lots of places you can meet. And it's a heck of a lot less expensive and what's more the money's being spent here in the county. 
I, I really have some serious questions as to the wisdom. I, uh, I know that the 2016-17 budget, when compared to the prior year, was only a 6% increase. But if you compare it to your actual, actual spending, it's almost 38% increase. And I can't imagine how you could go to your membership, much less the public, that's going to home in on this, and believe me, we'll make sure they home in on it, and say, wait a minute, how are you going to, in why are you increasing your budget 38% in one year? I mean, heck, even the, even the county only projects a 3 or 4% increase. And, and this just, it's totally, it's totally understandable. I think you ought to go back to your budget committee and say, hey, rethink this in terms of what we actually spent last year. Thank you. Randy, could I? Certainly. Uh, we talked about that. We talked, uh, if you look at the, the, the second page on the projected actual versus proposed, the one item you mentioned, um, the uh, new investment manager, that's a possibility <coughs> that's something we, we have talked to with Callan about whether we're going to hire uh, a manager that has to be paid out of our budget rather than taking it out of our investment. Um, we may not do that, we may do that. So but we have to budget for it, budget for it if it's going to be a possibility. That's 283,000 of the increase. The other big increase is property maintenance, $144,000. We discussed that. We have to do, I mean, the big issue <coughs> is painting, uh, having the building checked out and replacing the carpeting. The carpeting is a, a hazard. Um, two things we have to do. You subtract those two <coughs> items and it's a very minor increase in the, uh, the overall expected expenditures. So I have a question for the, the finance committee. Um, so I, I think it is pretty normal practice, though, that when um, when you adopt a budget, you want to be conservative in your numbers in that you want to show what the cost could be in that line item, even though you want to work throughout the year to not spend up to that dollar amount. And I think that's reflected in this year's actuals being below the budget. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess my question to the finance committee is, um, is that the reason why uh, the line items show um, that they haven't been reduced in some areas because there's a possibility, although no one's hoping to spend to the max, there's a possibility that some of those line items will go, <coughs> could go up to the um, allocated amount. Um, like for example, I mean, I haven't spent any money on travel. I don't claim a stipend for the board, <laughs> you know. So you know that line item, um, I think actually the board stipend thing went down a little bit. And I don't know if that's because they they know that some of us aren't taking it or. I think there was a a, a need. Not the need for as many budget uh, meetings where there is some stipends paid. But you know, when, when I prepared the budget for the, uh, for the uh, treasurer tax collector's office, I always knew what I had spent during that year and if I thought there was a possibility that there, I was gonna have to spend it the next year, I had the budget for it. You, know, you, you get, you, you budget what you think you're gonna spend. And in the long run, it really means very little if your budget is, is more than you actually spend. Uh, the important thing is what we spend, not what we budget. So you know, I, would, I would imagine the management fees, since we're not going to do uh, private equity, would probably go down. Well, if I made that, okay. private equity would have been, we never would have paid a fee directly in private equity because those are always netted uh, within the fund to fund or the fund approach. Uh, this we anticipate the possibility of moving some managers from mutual funds to potentially uh, uh, separately managed account or other structures where we may need to pay those fees directly. Uh, we also built this budget when we were still considering the multi-asset class strategy that we may have to pay directly. So uh, <coughs> there's a lot of, of guesswork that goes into your budget because you're planning for uh, you know at least a year out. Um, and we do the best we can in, in building this. And we do build in, to some extent, some worst case scenario in here. Um, but unlike the horror stories of what, what most people think about with government agencies, um, with our budget, there's no incentive to spend more than we need to. Um, because we're not appropriated or allocated money out of a budget from a larger pool like a general revenue fund, um, there's no carryover for us to think about. So we don't, in, we don't have that kind of incentive 
of, oh, we're coming to the end of the fiscal year, I gotta spend money so that I have it next year. We don't think in those terms. We think in terms of, we're only gonna spend what we need to spend. We're building a plan with this budget of what we, what we plan to spend or anticipate spending because there's a lot of variables. You know, we've talked some about uh, the legal expense. We really don't know what's gonna happen uh, throughout the coming year that may require more uh, expense in uh, the legal area. Disability is the same way. Uh, you know, we were relatively low this year on our spending on disabilities. We don't know what's coming. Uh, so we budget for those things at kind of historical norms. If we come in below that, great. We're not out, uh, you know, declaring victory that we've done all this great thing by not spending uh, our budget amount because that's not really a victory for us. Um, being effective and efficient uh, and for our members is really what we're striving to do. While, and, and I say effective and efficient because we have to do what we have to do here, so. Mr. Stevens? I'd like to expound on what, um, what uh, James said. It, I wouldn't be as concerned if it was an allocated dollar coming from county resources. This is worse. The reason this is worse is where every dollar we spent here is going to go into the UAAL and going to be paid over 18 years at seven and a quarter percent. Every dollar we spend, there's no extra dollars. We have a negative cash flow. This comes out of our general assets. It adds to the debt. Every penny we spend will add to the debt. We'll pay three dollars back because of it. We have an ever increasing debt from this. We, this association right here. This board right here, um, maybe not the same people with the same hats, have created a negative net worth for our county. I think it's time to take a leadership position. It's time to uh, step up and make sure that every dollar is as carefully spent as can be. If I look at this, um, first, three meetings back, we voted to have a zero-based budget. I don't hear a zero-based budget. I hear this is what we budgeted in the past. A zero-based budget, you don't give any weight to what you budgeted in the past. You only give weight to what you think your expenses are going to be the next year. So if we look at this budget, um, we have a 14% growth in our general administrative. We have a 38% overall growth. So let me repeat that, it bears repeating. 14% over our actual this year, 38% when we include everything, investment managers and the building maintenance. And, uh, and Siegel and Talon and everybody else. Um, we've lost 4% of our asset base this year. Even with the huge increased contributions that come in, we're about 4% down in assets than we were at the beginning of the year. I've had quite extensive discussion with Alan Fora. Uh, Carmel is gone uh, down to San Diego, so I chatted with Alan about the budget process for the county. He tells me that the rest of the county, all the other um, divisions in the county increased by an average of one to three percent. Overall county budget is down for this for this next fiscal year. I really can't distinguish from what he said about the individuals. I don't make that nexus. But um, but nothing went up. No general spending went up over one to three percent, and that includes I think one point nine for salaries. If um, I look, at, if he says if there's special things like the sheriff's department needs new trucks, it'd be allocated uh, and then taken out the next year. But he says there's no division within the county that is over eight to nine percent increase, thirty-eight blanking percent. It's outrageous. It's crazy. It's irresponsible. We're adding to our debt. It's gonna. It's we can't do this anymore. If you look at the line items in here, you know, you go and look at the line items. Last year we had two off-site meetings, probably more than we should. Two off-site, it was $1,800. What do we have in the budget this year? 5,000. Crazy. <clears throat> if, if money grew on trees and we're fully funded, that might be okay. But it's absolutely outrageous. If you look at what, I'm mean, I mean, just taking a couple of the snapshots, if you have what the employees, Hawaii training, $9,200 this year. What are we doing? We're more than doubling, 20000 This is out of control. We have grown, this budget has grown over 30% per year for the last 10 years. It's crazy. Stop it. Stop the spending. Stop the debt. 
show discipline. It's a time to take leadership and control our cost. Every penny that you inflate on this budget is going to add is going to add to the debt of this county. Can I, can I ask a question? The thirty-eight percent is a, that the one that's on uh, the proposed? Or I mean, the uh, projected actual compared to the proposed budget. Is that what you're getting? Actual. Well, looking at actual compared to proposed budget, okay. thirty-nine, thirty-seven point nine five. Okay. I rounded thirty-eight. Rounded thirty-eight. So look under new management. What's what's the number under the new manager? Two thousand five hundred and sixteen point sixty-four percent. Look under property management or uh, maintenance, eight hundred percent. That figure, thirty-eight percent, is ridiculous. Okay. The, the, look back the CEO's up office says eight to nine percent for any other division in the county. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than that. Why are we thirty-eight? Because of those odd numbers. But look back at the last year's uh, adopted budget to this year's. Proposed budget takes six point three six. I went through the budget process last year. I voted against it. It was disgusting. 6. It was irresponsible. Six point three percent when you when you compare last year's proposed budget to this year's proposed or adopted budget to this year's proposed. You're looking at a figure that means nothing when you're when you have one item that is two thousand five hundred and sixteen percent. It skews the whole thing. Here's what I know. I call for the for the uh, We have a negative net worth. This, this exact one. same process here is what created the data. Question. Question. Yes. Pardon? Call to move the question? Yes. Any second on that one? Yes. Is that fifteen thirty two votes? No, I think so. Okay. You need another book better than me. Oh. I'll make it up. You may want to restate so that John hears. Oh, there was a, a motion to move the question and it was seconded. Uh, repeat the motion, sir. But there was a motion to move the question, and it was seconded. Motion to move the question means we take a vote right now. I got to make sure it doesn't take two thirds. To, to, to approve the budget as, as presented. Just to call the question, John. Is it two thirds? What's the two standard? Thirds. Let, let's assume it's two thirds. Two thirds. Let's take a vote on move the question. Ms. Kavanos? Yes. Mr. Sakowitz? Yes. Supervisor Jordy? Yes. Mr. Stevens? No. Mr. Knutson? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Can I call it for a motion now, please? Pardon me? Can I call it now because we couldn't call it during once they called the question? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Let me skip that. There are two line items that are that are drawing this up, and um, one is um, the possibility of hiring a, a um, new manager, which is not that's a decision that still comes back to this board at some later point. We haven't we've budgeted for it, but we haven't signed any contracts. The other is uh, repairs to the building. Well, that's deferred maintenance. The county has deferred maintenance on other buildings, but the county for the last several years, besides paying down the debt, besides covering a bunch of other things, has been spending money on deferred maintenance of county buildings. The county doesn't own this building, the retirement board owns it. So, you know, when we get to the point of actually spending money on the on the deferred maintenance of the building, if you want to vote and make the case for why we should not be spending the money on this building. Go to the administrator, 14%. Where, where else did, in, as a supervisor, was any other department ever increased spending 14% over the last year? This didn't happen. Okay, well, here's me, it's these two line items. Ten times. <laughs> That's taking that 14% takes those out, 38% with those items. You just voted for 14% spending increase over a inflated last year. Unbelievable. It's irresponsible. Okay, there's no debate once we do the okay. move the motion, so we're going to take a vote right now. Let's go. Um, so the motion is to accept the budget as uh, presented by the item budget committee. Ms. Kavanis? Yes. Mr. Sackowitz? Yes. Supervisor Jordy? Yes. Mr. Stevens? No. Mr. Knudsen? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Goodman? Yes. Okay. Randy, I know it's off, a little bit off target, but all I need to do is walk out there with a new hip, catch my toe on this carpet, and this budget is blown. 
There are things that must be done. And I know that's not going to show up in whatever campaign is coming against this board and what we are trying well, to do. We've had this building for 10 years and haven't done anything. Yeah. Here, so it's All right. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, a uh, yes. quick footnote. Go ahead. I just want to point out to the uh, public who's uh, listening or uh, watching this um, uh, the video that uh, this board has voluntarily adopted uh, a highly disciplined uh, uh, standard for uh, its budget. Uh, back when Supervisor McCowan was on the retirement board, we voluntarily uh, adopted uh, a limit of the, the lesser of, uh, well, well, by statute, our budget could be the greater of 2 million, or what is it, uh, James, uh, 23 basis points of our plan? Uh, 21. And, 20, and we uh, voluntarily adopted a limit of 1 million for the budget. And we came under budget last year. So for the public uh, who uh, may be trying to uh, ascertain, you know, whether we've been irresponsible or reckless or some of the other words used at this meeting, we have absolutely been responsible. We have been, we have voluntarily adopted a budget that's half of what we could have adopted by law, and we were even under that limit. So I think we've been very responsible. Thank you, John. Okay, we're going to move into closed session. Wait a minute. Oh, sure. We didn't. Are we going to have board members' comments after closed session? Yes, there's general board members. Yeah, we come. Okay. Yeah, we come out of closed session. Okay. Oh. Okay. Much to okay. Been general board discussion. Okay, we just um, came out of closed session, and we are to item number nine: general board member discussion. Any general board member discussion? Yes, Jerry. I know I don't know the history past a year and a half ago, but as we addressed over a multi-year period of time addressing the unfunded obligation of CalSTRS, the board set the policy, um, and I know you guys undoubtedly, you make <coughs> final um, uh, you do the hard work, but we, we requested legislation because CalPERS could just change what members pay. Um, obviously, uh, CalSTRS couldn't. We had to get le legislation, we had to get the governor, we had to uh, be sure that the legislature itself was going to be with us with this, and the employers who are all the, the 1,800 school districts in the state of California and a million members um, to begin raising contributions because we looked at an unfunded obligation that is similar, maybe, maybe proportionately less, but still huge. And it took an entire, uh, it took the board being resolved to take the hits of saying we need to start raising what goes in incrementally small to begin with and then gradually increase over what will be a 30-year period of time to bring the CalSTRS unfunded obligation completely uh, up to 100% funding. I've never heard that discussion here at the board in the year and a half that I've been here. Um, I've never heard any mention at all about what people are going to pay because if retirees are as concerned as I would be about, you know, where their their retirement years are going to be spent. They might be willing to take a little less of an increase to know they're putting an increase into their retirement fund. And if that if that discussion has occurred and I just missed it, uh, please let me know. If not, then I think we ought to at least start exploring that even though I know it's going to bring even more stuff down on our heads. I mean, I would support putting that on, on our next agenda. Okay. I think, I think Pepper requires a 50% contribution on part of the employees, I believe. Of the normal? Of the, 
2018. And then they can do the same thing for the general members, but it's part of the bargaining. Um, part of the negotiated bargaining with the labor unions. Right. Well, I, I know it would be a recommendation from us to the board of supervisors. It, you'd have we have to change the legislation. The 37 Act specifies that whatever tier you're in, this is what your contributions are. So it's not a change in legislation. Well. If we, um, we heard an argument today about the target rate. If we believed our investment manager, there probably should be a change to the target rate. If there is a change to the target rate, that will certainly change the contributions, both for the employer and the employee. The employee is only responsible for their normal costs. Right, but if we change the target rate, it will change the normal cost for the employee. Yeah, well, they won't pick up the cost on the UAAL, but it will change the the cost on the employee um, because you have a lower discount rate. Yeah, it did when we changed it before. Yeah, it did. So I think so. I think the agenda item would be as broad as possible to cover all the options. That'd be yeah. That'd be great. Be specifically, that should be broad. So I like it all. If I'm getting the, the direction from the board, there's an interest in some education around how member contribution rates and employee contribution rates are determined and what, what can be done to adjust those. Yep. Yep. Does that sound yep. like I'm out. in the vicinity? Yep. Yep. Judy, I hope you got that. Awesome. That sounds good. Because I can't repeat that again if I had to. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Is that it? We, I don't know if we'll be able to have that next month uh, because it will okay. it somewhere. will involve uh, probably working with legal and actuaries to, to get a handle on everything there. But, uh, sorry, I know this is important in the discussion, but I have. Anybody else? There was a request to uh, have some training on reciprocity uh, several months back. That's still out there. I haven't forgotten it. Uh, the plan was to bring it next month. Um, Great. So. Cool. Okay. Anything else? Okay. The meeting is adjourned until the next meeting will be held Wednesday, July 20th, 2016 at 8.30 a.m. Thank you, trustees. Thanks. Hey, John, uh, do you, if you have your tablet and want to stay on.